Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines, and this is I Am Loved Church. Good morning. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for today. It's a nice day, a little windy. Hopefully it doesn't come into the video. We pray your will be done. We pray that you would use these lips um, to speak truth, uh, to convict, to bring people who don't know you to you into repentance and uh, to help the ears hear your voice, understand and seek your face. We can't thank you enough for all that you do and continue to do. We pray you silence all the thoughts of within ourselves, of others, uh, and of the enemy. You're good, you're amazing, and you're holy. Thank you so much. God bless. In Jesus' name. <laughs> wow, who would ever have thought I wouldn't have... Um, you're probably asking, what am I talking about? I recorded not too long ago, a few minutes ago, and then I was like, no, nah, let's scratch that one, scrap it. And then I was like, okay, let's try it again. And honestly, I started off with the last one saying, I don't know what I'm going to preach about. And actually, this one is pretty much the same thing. My goal has been trying to write sermons and stuff, but I just don't feel like it's time yet. I did one, um, but that was just verses, and I just kind of like, you know, winged it. But actually, anyways, what I'm talking about is I didn't know what I was going to preach about until I just finished my prayer. And I heard it. I was like, oh, because I'm studying a lot through multiple different areas in the Bible. So let's get right to it. I'm going to start off with what Paul says. Paul says this. He says, If I have all faith that can move mountains, but I have not love, I become nothing. If I have gifts of prophecy, I could tell the future and so and so forth. And, you know, but I have not love, I'm nothing. If I give all of my possessions to the poor, but I have not love, I have nothing. Um, you know, and he goes on with other things. If I have all the money in the world, basically, if I have everything that I need or whatever, but I have not love, I have nothing. And overall, the Lord has spoken to me and he has said, for those of you who do believe, do not chase anything else besides love. Don't chase miracles. Don't chase, you know, uh, faith is great. It's, it's foundational. It's what we need. But in all of this that we do as Christians, it means nothing if we have not love for one another. You know, if we have all the knowledge and wisdom in the world, but we don't love each other, it means nothing. And the core foundation of the gospel is there's a law, God's law, and we broke it. We can't live up to it every day. So if we can't live up to it every day, neither can anyone else. And God says, you've broken all my commandments. You break them every day. And nothing you do can fix that. Some religions believe in karma. Karma is trying to right your wrongs. And Jesus is saying you can't fix it. Once you've committed one, you are infected. You know, if you've ever seen some sort of zombie movie or cartoon or comic book of some sort, once you get bit, you're infected. You're done <laughs> once. And Jesus is saying, once you've sinned once, it's over. You are contaminated. You are infected with sin. And he describes it and says, since Adam, the first human being has sinned, all people were born from Adam. They also will become sinners naturally. Your brand new baby, brand new babies, kids, all sinners. We're all sinners. We all fall short of the glory, the perfection of God and, and his holiness of right and wrong. 
And the, and the world has redefined right and wrong for themselves. I was reading through the Old Testament. Um, this Bible yearly plan that goes Old Testament one chapter and then New Testament another chapter. And it goes back like that every day. And I was reading through Leviticus. Leviticus is a, the book of the, one of the books of the laws of Moses. Moses wrote the laws of God. Uh, it was God writing them through him. And one of the laws was basically, uh, I think it was a sin offering of some sort, right? So there was a trespass that the people made. They had to atone for their self and they had to atone for the people. It was one of the high priests, as Aaron's and his sons. And long story short, it was basically uh, they had committed a sin and they were, and they had to kill animals. Like they had to put their hand on like a goat's head and they had to cut its throat and they had to open up the animal and they had to take its bladder and its liver and kidneys out and they had to sprinkle the blood on this, you know, altar and then they had uh, and they had to burn you know the body and then the lord who's holy and who's perfect would accept their offering you so so i'm trying to drive it in and say that god is holy and god hates sin holy and he hates sin i know like satan's statue has like a goat's head and like doing that nonsense and in his like crisscross applesauce like a buddhist statue he's mocking god because they had to kill a lot of goats and, and sheep and whatnot and so that's where that satanic nonsense comes from um so this is just to draw a perspective of god's holiness and his character he hates sin and he loves holiness he loves purity he's a god of pure holy undefiled untainted from sin from and sin is described as darkness it's also described as described as confusion and god has said i've set myself apart from that i despise it it's nasty and we are all sinners and he says no one can see my face unless they've been cleansed of their sins no one can know my presence unless they've been washed from sins. And the only thing that can atone for sin that God says I will accept is, the, is blood. I will accept nothing else. Blood is required to cleanse us from sins. If you've ever done something bad, what begins to happen is you feel guilty. You feel this guiltiness. You feel dirty. Your conscience, your soul feels dirty. And God says, the only thing that can wash you is blood, not, you know, the only thing I will accept is the, the sacrifice of blood. No, you can't go get any animal of some sort or even a goat or even sheep and sacrifice it. That's Old Testament. But since Jesus came on the scene, he offered his body up to God as a holy, perfect sacrifice that has never sinned like these animals. And he died on the cross so he could forgive us of our sins, so he could wash our conscience clean. Our conscience bears witness to our wrong motives and our actions. And they constantly accuse us of what we've done. The Bible says in the book of Genesis, when Adam sinned and he covered himself with fig leaves with, with Eve, God says, didn't I tell you not to eat of the, did you eat of the fruit of the tree that I told you not to eat of? And they said, <clears throat> or I'm sorry, let's back up a second. He says, where are you? This is God speaking to Adam. And he says, I hid myself because I was naked. And, and Adam said, or God said, who told you you were naked? His conscience told him he was naked. His conscience bears witness of the truth. Each and every one of us has a conscience that God has put in our hearts and the depths of our soul. And when you sin, when you sin, you're an, an accuser of your conscience tells you you've done this. This is wrong. So 
if you're accusing people of something, it's because you did that. And as your conscience is bearing witness of your sin. That's why you got people accusing of each other of what they've done themselves. And he says, until you get your sins forgiven, get your sins washed away, then you will live in, in, in constant judgment. You will live in constant accusation towards, towards yourself. Well, every day you wake up, you're reminded of all your sins. And these are burdens that people wear every day. And only the blood of Jesus can wash you of that. God who sees that you believe in his only son and you repent, you ask God for forgiveness, you cry out to God for forgiveness, he will send you the blood of Jesus in the spiritual realm to wash you of your sin. And until that happens, God will not accept any offering. He's not accepting blood of goats or animals or other people, right? People throw each other under the bus, blaming and accusing each other, thinking that maybe if I blame this person enough, I'm going to get my sins forgiven, you know, or maybe if I do enough good works, I'm going to get my sins forgiven, you know, and that's not what God is accepting. God is only accepting the blood of Jesus and that he sits on the right hand of God. So you have to ask Jesus, who is not you and anyone else, he's in heaven. You have to ask Jesus, God, through Jesus' blood to forgive you. And Jesus will pour out his blood on your being and you will be healed. You see, a lot of people, they usually have drugs or alcohol problems or some sort of addiction or money or power or, uh, or doing good things because they're trying to, they're trying to right their wrongs. They're trying to get their sins forgiven, but they can't do it by themselves. None of us can do it by ourselves. Only the blood of Jesus can do it and cleanse us of our sins. And, in, and for those of us in church, it's not about the miracles or the prophecies. Those things come after. It's not about that. The foundation of the gospel is about what Jesus did on the cross for us. He forgave us for our sins. And John the Baptist said one thing. He said, keep up with daily repentance. We have to repent. We have to ask God to, to forgive us every day. But we can't analyze ourselves. We have to ask the Holy Spirit to seek, seek us, seek our minds, correct us. We have to have Christian fellowship. We have to humble ourselves and say, where am I falling short? Where, where, where in my life is there sin, presumptuous sins or sins that I don't know about? You read your Bible. The Bible will tell you all the sins that you've committed on a regular basis. And we have to go and look, look at the Holy Word of God and see where there's sins in our life that we don't know of. Because the world, the people will not, not tell you who aren't Christian, who won't tell you your sins. And some of you guys who know people's sins, you're not being nice about it and you're not telling them what their sins are. You're not correcting them because you don't want to be judgmental, but you'd rather see them burn in all eternity in their sins. Their sins are killing them. Their sins are burning them. You know, we hear the things of, oh, I don't want to go to hell. They're already experiencing hell. You ever hear them complaining? You complain a lot, complain, complain, complain for every little thing. It's your sins. Your sins are accusing you. That's hell. That's the burning. That's the wrath of God abiding right on you right now. You're always accusing and excusing people. You're always blaming and always uh, complaining all the time, 24 seven, that's hell. That's what the Bible talks about as being um, the weeping and gnashing of teeth in a fire that will never be quenched, never be satisfied. You're always complaining. Your complaining starts and then you complain about something else and it's just, you just get wrapped up in complaining and that causes cancer, that causes disease, that causes things like the virus that we're seeing going around. People are just sinning and sinning and sinning and because they're sinning, their conscience is bearing witness and demons are entering into them and demons are accusing them and they're also excusing and accusing other people. So you have to be washed. Your garment, your spiritual clothing is dirty and defiled. You have to become like a child again. You have to get your sins forgiven. And when you get your sins forgiven, you don't need alcohol to try to wash away 
your sins. You don't need status or good deeds. You just get your sins forgiven and then you become more like a child. You see young children, they have this natural joy about them. They have this natural peace about them. They have natural kindness and all this is natural things because, because they've, they've sinned less. They have not sinned. They're unaware of sin. But when they get older, you see the people who get older, they go off and, and they, they don't get their sins forgiven. Usually older people, they become more grumpy and more angry and bitter and nasty and arrogant. You don't really see it too much in teenagers, but you can. What happens? It's because they're sinning against God and they don't know his rules or his laws. That's the only reason. So God is calling humanity to, for, to repent of their sins. Repent, repent of your sins. Say, I'm sorry to God. Ask Jesus into, you, into your life. Tell, help, uh, cry out to him, cry out to me. I need healing, I need forgiveness. And God who's free, uh, who died on the cross for free for us, he's willing to give it to us if we're willing to earnestly, humbly, meaningfully um, repent and say, I'm sorry, God. I can't fix what I've, what I've destroyed, what I've, all the mess that I've made. And until that happens, you're going to be waking up every day reminded of all the wrongs that you've done, and you're going to try to right them, and you can never do that. And that's what Jesus says, unless you believe in me, and unless I forgive you of your sins, you will die in your sins. And that's why we got people who kill themselves. They sin so much to the point where they're just like, they're so guilty. They just feel so shameful and so guilty. They just, I can't stand all these thoughts constantly reminding me of how bad of a person I am. Well, you are. But you have a savior. He's forgiven you. But do you want a savior? No, I need to work off my sin. I need to work for it. I need to earn my righteous ways back. How many right things do you have to do when you commit one wrong thing, right? And we sin against, we sin every day. And let's say, say hypothetically, you don't sin or you never sinned, right? If that was even possible for you or not, right? What if people that sin against you? What about people who do things against you? What about them? You have unforgiveness towards them. That's a sin too in God's eyes because God, Jesus never sinned. So he was blameless, but people sinned against him all the time. They nailed him to a cross and he forgave them. That's horrible. Someone nailing me to a cross, beating me and lashing me. Or they could barely tell that he was a human being anymore. He was so badly bruised and beaten. But the Bible says this, he was beaten on our behalf. This, the, what, the punishment that was due to us, he's taken upon himself. And through his blood, we are healed. Through his forgiveness, we are healed. But do we go to him? Do you want to go to Jesus for, you, for your sins to be forgiven? And that's why Jesus says, he says, I didn't come to call the righteous, the self-righteous, the people who think they need no forgiveness. I come to call those who know that they're sinners, who know that they need a savior, who know that they have sin in their life and they need forgiveness of their sin. Those are the people I've called. I'm a sinner. I've sinned. Forgive me. Every single person that Jesus healed, they were willfully and openly confessing their sins. Openly. They're like, you know, I can't live with this bondage no more. I can't live in sin no more. I know my friends and my family are going to think about me, you know, but I don't even care. I'm in pain. And I'd rather, I'd rather be set free in the open and people ridicule me for the things that I've done wrong and me confess my sins and be healed. I'd rather be healed and be judged by everyone for it than be than be living in judgment, living in sin, and, and pretend that everything's okay to all my friends and family. Are you doing that? Don't you want to be set free? Don't you want to be really healed and stop going to the doctors or stop going to the alcohol or the marijuana and stop going to other people to approve you, to say that you're not a bad person when you really are a bad person, when you really have 
strife and anger in your heart when you really just feel dirty all the time no matter how much makeup you put on no matter how much you wash your body you just feel like you're still dirty don't you just want that dirtiness to come off and you just feel like a kid again feel brand new feel whole again and Jesus is saying come to me I'll wash you with my blood because you've sinned against me and for those of the, us in church it's the same thing. It doesn't matter how much good things you do. It doesn't matter how much you tithe. It doesn't matter how many good deeds or, or, or how many friends or whatever thing. That's worldly stuff Jesus is saying. He said, well, the thing that matters is repentance. Repentance. That's the only thing that matters. He said, if, if, if a man loses one sheep out of 99, he goes after the one Better, better it is for one man who repents than 99 people who need no repentance. The woman was searching for her lost coin in the house and she finally finds it. And she comes and brings her whole family together and says, I found my lost coin. And right after that is followed up with, better is one person who repents and the angels will glorify than 99 people who knew, need no repentance. 99 people who don't think that they've done anything wrong to others or others have done anything wrong to them. It's the whole message of the gospel is repentance. And when we start to make it about anything else besides repentance, then we lose the gospel, then we lose Jesus. And we make it worldly. Go to your friend, go to your neighbor, go to somebody that, that you need to ask for repentance for. You need to say, I'm sorry to, and say, I'm sorry. It's better. Jesus says, leave your gift at the altar. Be reconciled to your neighbor first before you even come and pray to me, before you even come offer your gift to me or you do your works. Make sure that you're in right standing with God. So that's basically the message for today is it's about repenting of your sin every day. You need to repent. You need to ask God to forgive you for your sins. You need to be corrected. You need to show, you need to, you need to humble yourself and allow God's correction, allow his judgment to come into your life to show you, to point out that's sin that's sin. You need to stop doing that because every time you do that, you sin again and then you need to ask for forgiveness again. You need to learn from your mistakes. Now, how could we do that if we live in a society that can't judge each other based off of God's holy commandments? And that's the society that we live in. Nobody wants to be judged. Well, guess what? They're already being judged because they're living in sin. No matter how much you want to ignore God's holy righteousness, your conscience has God's testimony written all over it. So if you, don't, if you have an identity crisis, it's the identity crisis is because you're living in sin. If you have no peace in your life, it's because you're living in sin. It's sin that accuses us. It's not anyone else, really. I mean, technically, yes, it's other people, but it's God. You know who's judging you right now while you're feeling so dirty? God is judging you because you've sinned against him. It's not, it's not really your neighbor, it, even if it is, it's, just, it's, it's really God. Because people can say mean things all, to me all the time and I just go, oh, I don't feel it. I don't take it personal, you know why? Because God isn't judging me. That's the only person you need not to judge you. And he says, if you feel judged, if you feel dirty, it's because, it's because you've sinned against me and only me have you sinned against. David says it. I sinned against you, Lord, and only you have I sinned against. You need to get right with God. You need to repent of your sin with, with a real genuine heart. You really need to humble yourself and seek God's face because your sin is killing you. Your sin is accusing you. Your sin is making you feel dirty and ashamed. Your sin is heavy upon you. That's the wrath of God. You see people angry every day. That's the wrath of God. They're, sin to, they're sinning against God. You see people without peace every day. That's the wrath of God. You see people worrying every day. That's the wrath of God. You see people not kind or with genuine joy in their life. That's the wrath of God. Every single thing that's not the nine fruits of the spirit, right? It's the wrath of God. That's the wrath of God. They've sinned against God. So they're wearing judgment. They're trying to earn salvation. 
They're trying to justify their sin. And God's like, you're, you're, you're like, in the Old Testament, what used to happen was the people, they would, there was a goat. They would put all their sins on this goat, right? And then they would let the goat loose. And the goat would just be like, acting like crazy and run off in the wilderness. Is that you? Do you act like a maniac? Because you're just in sin, they're going to judge me anyway, so I might as well act like a maniac. Might as well do whatever, whatever I want. And that's described as an abomination, as an abomination. And that's what they did when they sacrificed their animals. They put all their sins on the animal, and then they'd kill it because it, it is, it's rotten, it's nasty, it's disgusting, it's vile. And then, and, but the animal was, was perfect in the sense of it was pure and never sinned. But we sin every day. Do we try to put our sins on others? Like we've done something wrong and we try to go, I'm in so guilty right now. Instead of humbling myself, coming on, getting down on my knees and asking God to forgive me and washing me of that sin, I am going to take all my junk and I'm going to blame this person for it. Or these people, it's all sin. It's the same thing over and over and over again. And God has genu- gen- gen- generously, lovingly given of his son to say, now you don't have to sacrifice animals anymore. You could just go straight to Jesus and he could forgive you of your sin. And he says, until Jesus' blood pours through your, your spiritual being and washes you of all the dirty things that you've done or the things that other have done against you and you haven't forgiven, unless Jesus' blood cleanses you, you will die in your sin. You are tormented right now in your sin, right? You're always complaining. That's a sign. You're always blaming others. That's a sign. Or blaming yourself. That's a sign. You have no peace. That's a sign. You have no genuine joy. That's a sign. Right? So I'm about to be done. My hands are freezing. (laughs) It's colder than it looks. Repentance. That's the message. Repent of your sins. Say, I'm sorry, God. I need the blood of Jesus to wash me of my dirty sins. And he will freely give it to you. If you are, um, if you mean it, do you mean it? Do you mean when you pray, when you ask God, forgive me of my sins, do you mean it? Or is it just like, yeah, la, 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 give me it, give me your blood. No, it's, it's not that. And even if you pretend like, please God, like it's, it's, it's in the heart. He who believes in Jesus, you have to believe in your heart that he will forgive you. And you have to do this every day because we sin every day. And then the part where we start to walk in wisdom is where we start to learn from our mistakes. Oh, that's a sin against God. I'm not going to do that no more. That's a sin against God. I'm not going to do that no more. How do you know? The Holy Bible tells us. But if you don't read it, you don't believe it. If you don't apply it, you don't believe it. And you will die in your sin. Let's not die in our sin. Let's live. Free grace, it's provided. Free, it's free. His mercy that we don't deserve is free and it can wash us of all of our dirty and filthiness. If we ask him with an earnest, humble heart, forgive me, Lord, for I've sinned against you and you only. Send the blood of Jesus to wash me of my sin. Please. Let's pray. God, I thank you for the message today. I didn't know what it was supposed to be, but it, it's, you know, and only you know. Father, if we're living in sin, which we always are living in sin, we pray that you would search us deeply. We would line up your word to our life and say this is the places that i have sinned we look at the ten commandments do we have any idols in our life 
things that we hold higher than we hold you. Yes, that's a sin. Do we have any images in our life that, such as beauty, such as uh, pictures or anything that we worship? That's a sin. Do we not honor our father and our mother? That's a sin. Do we not keep your Sabbath holy Sunday morning church? If we don't do that, it's a sin. Do we kill each other with our, with our, with our accusing of our mouth or physically? That's a sin. Do we take your name in vain? Jesus Christ, do we take his name in vain? Do we take God's name in vain? Oh, oh, oh my God, do we say stuff like that? That's a sin. Are we jealous of one another? That's a sin. Are we lying? That's a sin. What are we doing, God, that's against you, that goes against your word? It's a sin. Are we desiring and uh, lusting after other people's spouses or people who aren't our spouses? That's a sin. Are we coveting other people's lives, th wanting, desiring things that, that aren't from you, that aren't good, that are other people's? That's a sin. And that's just the first 10 of them. Father, I pray that we would start looking at the Ten Commandments and moving from there, looking in the Bible and seeing where have we sinned against you. And I'd pray we would ask for repentance. Those in the church and those outside the church, we would say, I'm sorry, God, and I need the blood of Jesus to cleanse me. In your name, amen. Repent, say I'm sorry to God. Be forgiven and be healed. By the blood of Jesus, that can, that's the only thing that can cleanse your conscience, that can cleanse your soul, that can cleanse your mind and your heart. God bless.